Hello guys. How are you all? Welcome to Fanfic Adventure. In this video we will see what if Naruto Naruto reincarnated as the son of Hera and Madara, Naruto plus Percy Jackson and the Olympians crossover. But before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now without any further ado, let's begin the story. In a small Japanese style office sat two unassuming women having a cup of tea. Just to look at these two one might think they were colleagues or friends having a small get together. Technically they would be right. Hera. It's been too long, I must ask did you enjoy the vacation in my land that you asked for during your last visit? Asked one of the women. This just happened to be Amaterasu the Shinto goddess of heaven and the sun. Why yes I did and that is actually one of the reasons I am here today the other is, well. The other women in the room just let her sentence drift off into non-existence while she stared into the bottom of her cup only to get startled out of her thoughts by a giggle from her friend. Hera you have been my friend for over a thousand years I have helped you through a lot of crap that Sparky has put you through, so don't think you can hide anything from me. Declared Amaterasu provoking a blush of embarrassment from the queen of the Olympians. Wheel. Started Hera in attesting the waterway, I was in Konohagakir. Ah. The hidden leaf such a quanta little village lovely people, blurted out the sun goddess only to get glared at. As I was saying before I was interrupted, fired out the Olympian only to receive a small chuckle back, I might have accidentally, maybe, sorta, met someone. She finished in a shy and self-loathing tone. This caused Amaterasu to do a double take, it was true that she had been nagging her friend to blow off some steam as her husband was nothing but a waste of time but she didn't expect it to happen. She was the goddess of marriage after all. Okay so tell me what is he like? Asked a thoroughly intrigued Shinto. Well he was shy, always putting up a front due to his family, very caring towards those he cared about especially his brother, and was incredibly strong, Hera replied. Wait a second how did you get Senju? Amaterasu practically bellowed wondering how her friend managed to get her claws into the ditzy founder of the village. What the idiot that grows trees? No I am talking about Madara Uchiha I have no idea why anyone would like that Senju character he was just a bit too naive for my liking. Stated Hera in a dismissive tone. After Amaterasu got over the shock of the fact that her friend had gotten together with one of if not the greatest warrior of the time she asked. So what? You were in a mortal aspect which doesn't affect you as Hera and only you and a select few are allowed into that realm due to their relations with it so basically no harm right? exclaimed the sun goddess while taking a drink of tea. Not quiet you see the mortal aspect I was in took damage early in its life and to repair it I needed to partially connect it to my normal body which means that as of a few months ago I hair am pregnant and have no idea what to do about it, panicked the goddess. At this the Shinto matriarch observed her friend carefully and thought. They had not long ago been given notice of a new prophecy about to be given while a normal shinobi could do the job adequately well if she used a demigod of Madara it would heighten the success rate significantly. Okay Hera I will offer you a deal I will keep your son safe I will find a surrogate mother to birth him and grow up he will be trained and armed and when ready sent to your world. How does that sound? Asked Amaterasu with a caring voice. Oh thank you, you have no idea how worried I was, cried Hera. I will warn you now Hera I have no idea how long it will take to find a suitable surrogate but when I am about to send him I will send a note, said the goddess. And with that a meeting that unknowingly shook two worlds to the core ended. XXXXX to Kamagahara XXXXX It had been two generations since the meeting and the prophecy was starting Amaterasu had found a surrogate mother for the child in one of Konoha's Kunoichi, she was called Kashina Uzumaki if she remembered correctly. Now that she thought about it she might have accidentally created one of the strongest bloodlines ever to grace the elemental nations as the boy would inherit some of the Uzumaki traits. The minor ones like the chakra supply and strong life force. He might also inherit some personality traits from the mother but nothing major, or at least she hoped not or Hera would kill her. On a brighter note she had suppressed the more noticeable Uchiha signifiers and placed a godly henge on the child that would adjust with him. There was a reason for this. She wanted the child to gain his own personality as a person not as a, Uchiha, the hive mentality the clan had formed had annoyed her and she didn't want that for her friend's son. She would tell him his true ancestry before he returns home. XXXXX to Kamagahara XXXXX Amaterasu was watching with the other kami from the throne room as the events started to unfold. 
First they watched the birth of the blonde-haired blue-eyed boy only for him to be stolen within minutes of his birth and the entire Anbu Corps eliminated. From there things went from bad to worse. The Kiyubi was released from the seal causing everyone to flinch when they saw the Sharingan appear in its eyes, the only one not flinching was Amari who was too busy cooing about how cute he was. Not long after the fourth managed to gain control again but then did something he would forever regret, he sealed the Kiyubi into his own son. Using the Death Reaper seal Minato Namikaze forfeited his own life and soul to seal the beast into his own child in the hopes of saving the village it was a noble thing to do with deep ramifications. XXXXX Konohagakir 10th of October 4 years later. XXXXX. Catch him. Catch that filthy demon. The scream and many like it could be heard throughout the streets of the village as he was running. Many would think that it was a riot but this was a shinobi village, a military village, that doesn't happen this was a lynch mob. The unfortunate victim a small boy running with all he had, the boy, about four years old, barley looked strong enough to stand due to starvation. His clothing torn and shredded from wear and tear. Now this small boy with spiky blonde hair and deep cerulean eyes was running for his literal life for something he had no control over. As he was about to turn a corner a white hot sting goes throughout his ankle and knocks his balance out forcing whatever was in his ankle in deeper while he skids along the road. Ha ha ha. How many times do you think he bounced? Was all the boy heard as he tried to get up and away from the converging mob. He didn't bounce you ass, oh no you're not going anywhere. Said another voice as another kanai pinned the boy's hand to the road. Come I wonder how many it will take before he passes out. The first voice asked with a sickly sweet tone to it that made the boy's spine shiver. I don't know, let's find out, and they proceeded to pummel the boy with Kanai pinning the boy to the ground before moving on to general target practice. After the seventh the boy passed out only to end up in a dark room, looking about he saw a faint glow off in the distance which he headed toward. Oh what's this has my jailer actually deigned to visit me? Came a voice from the depths of the darkness behind a cage that seemed to appear from nowhere. Hello there my name is Naruto, I don't know why you call me your jailer but I am going to assume you're the Kiyubi no Kitsune, said Naruto. Well it's about damn time someone recognized my greatness, responded the Kiyubi, but why aren't you afraid of me kid? Well that is simple unlike the villagers you have done nothing bad to me and if you have there was probably a reason that you can explain, and I can decide on at that time, but the villagers have taken out their pain on me for no reason so yeah you are the nicer person of the two stated the child getting an incredulous look from the fox. Kid why don't you act smart if you are this smart? Well it's simple shinobi rule 1. Deception if people think I am an idiot they will constantly underestimate me giving me the advantage. Said the boy with a grin that could outshine the sun. At this the Kiyubi could only laugh, kid I like the way you think I get the feeling we could get into a lot of trouble together. Dot oh and my name is Kurama said the fox wiping away a tear of laughter while looking at his new partner. And with that the boy woke up leaving Kurama to muse on the possible troubles to come. When Naruto opened his eyes he saw the old Hokage standing over him with a worried look on his face and he knew that he was safe, at least for another year. XXXXX Konoha Cliff Top Several years later XXXXX Naruto was standing on the cliff top with the old arrow senin trying to get him to train him to get stronger but all the old senin did was pull out a summoning contract not realizing that Naruto had signed one already. Due to his friendship with Kurama developing so well the old fox had gifted him the contract even told him where to find it it turned out he was the first ever signer. So to say that old arrow senin was shocked to see him summon a small fox instead of sign the contract was rather amusing indeed but waste not want not. When the old sage recovered enough to actually think he decided it would be best to set Naruto to work on his control as it looked like no one had ever really taught him much about control and he couldn't draw much out of his abilities without massive wastage. XXXXX Konoha Council Room After Fourth Shinobi War An everything has preceded canon except the ripples above mentioned Naruto still needs to prove his worth to Kurama via combat. XXXXX the war had finished and the alliance had been formed everyone had returned home to tend to their wounds and mourn the dead. There was also one other thing that had to be taken care of that one Tsunade Senju was both looking forward to and dreading, promotions and punishments and as it involved the so called heroes of the war the council had insisted to be present. Well let's begin this we are here for two people one is Naruto Uzumaki the other is Sasuke Uchiha both deserve a promotion of some kind while one deserves a major punishment. 
At this statement the room erupted in outrage including one pink-haired apprentice who was silenced almost instantly by her sensei withering glare. Once the racket had died down Tsunade continued on. Naruto Uzumaki with the leadership, strength and moral fortitude you have shown you should by all rights be immediately be promoted to cage, she said getting nods from every shinobi in the room with a few exceptions. The only reason you are not as due to rank, at which she glared at the council making them shrink into their seats, and lack of experience, at which she sighed as she had to concede the point. So from this moment on you were promoted to Junin threat level triple S, with that she handed him two uniforms revealing his true promotion of Anbu. Now for you Sasuke you deserve a promotion for helping end the war, but you also deserve to be executed for treason for being a missing nin for so long not including the attempt to return to that status afterwards. Tsunade stated bluntly causing another series of shouts which she silenced immediately. So after careful thought I have decided to let you live but only after sealing your chakra network. The effect of this statement on Sasuke was profound. Yes he would live but all his power would be gone? Would his life even be worth it anymore? Could he even call himself an Uchiha? This ceiling will only affect you not your heirs so you can still attempt to rebuild your clan, please don't make me regret my choice. Just as Tsunade was finishing those words there was a flash in the center of the room and a woman with long black hair slightly tanned skin wearing a red kimono was standing there only to be immediately surrounded by Anbu. Seriously is that any way to treat a goddess people? Asked the woman to the crowd causing them to look worried as the last two people claiming divinity had caused massive damage. Who are you? Asked Tsunade. Well that's a fun question but around here I would be known as Amaterasu said the goddess in a carefree manner ha not likely as if the matriarch of the gods would show up to a simple meeting of a village screeched one of the elderly women on the council well if you want proof here is proof and the woman clicked her figures and the sun literally switched off only to reappear when she clicked again proof enough she asked getting frantic nodding from the entire room good now as you can guess i have a reason to be here and it's you naruto she said pointing to the bewildered boy what do you mean by that if I can ask? Well I am so glad you did because it allows me to give you this little letter from your mother, stated Amaterasu in such a happy-go-lucky tone he couldn't help but sweat drop. M. Kami-sama could you explain what you mean by my mother? He asked only to receive a letter practically shoved under his nose by a rather amused-looking goddess. After deciding it couldn't hurt to read it he opened the letter. Dear Sochi I am so sorry that you have to read this instead of talking to me in person but please know that if it wasn't for some stupid law in my land I would be with you right now. If you have received this it means that my dear friend Amaterasu is with you and is about to explain your lineage to you just know that I will accept your decision no matter what. I am sure you will become a great man when you grow up just remember to always protect what you hold dear. Love your mother phosphorus monosulfide. Amaterasu will offer to bring you to my land I really hope you accept I would love to see you. PPS. If you accept to come you will need to learn about Greek mythology, as it will come in useful. PPPS. I know that after not being in your life for so long you might not forgive me but I hope to make it up to you somehow, I am sorry and I love you Sochi. Once he was done reading the letter he looked at the goddess squarely in the eye and asked, So you know my mother? Yes. Why should I believe you? I am a goddess? Not good enough I need proof, Naruto said in finality. GHA. Fine. Shinigami show yourself looks like it's the hard route, said Amaterasu and the entire room seemed to inhale at once as the most respected. Dot and feared god in the realm appeared before them. What do you require matriarch Sama? asked the Shinigami. I require the three souls out here for a few moments. Of course matriarch was the response before the reaper reached into its stomach and slowly started pulling and slowly but surely appeared one Minato Namikaze. The process was repeated twice more revealing none other than Kashina Uzumaki and Madara Uchiha. The room was now deathly quiet at the sight of the three people in front of them under guard of the god of the dead only for Naruto to run forward and embrace Kashina. Say what you want but the one time he met her had turned him into a major mama's boy. Okay Naruto what do you know of these people? asked Amaterasu causing everyone to look at her. Well Blondie is the asshole who stuck Kurama into me then there is mom and no matter how much I hate him Madara is one of the most impressive warriors I've ever seen, he replied getting a sweat drop from Minato a smirk and a smile from Kashina and a nod and, same to you Gaki, from Madara. 
Okay well first I am going to deactivate a seal I placed on you before you were born. She said making everyone blink. What? Just calm down and wait an and and there, she said and there was a flash of light followed by Madara staring at him. Izuna. No Izuna's eyes wear black yours or violet boy what's your name again? Only for Naruto to look around. Why is everyone staring at me like that? Maybe this will clear things up for you Gaki. Said Tsunade as she held up a small mirror for him to look into. What the fuck? Well you see you are a certain someone in this room's lost child. Said Amaterasu with just a bit too much joy. And what do you mean by that? Growled Naruto. Well Naruto before Madara's whole end of the world thing he had a lady friend. This lady friend got severely wounded in a fight and died. All the while Madara was nodding remembering the painful time of his life. What the poor man did not know was that he had somehow attracted the attention of a goddess on vacation in my realm. At this everyone just stared at the spirit who was in turn staring at Amaterasu. Now if I remember correctly they had spoken of but not gotten around to having kids due to the amount of wars at the time but they had chosen a name, Naruto. Rather fitting considering, she said smirking as the realization hit several in the room. Hold on are you saying that Gaki? Dot May Godchild is actually Madara Uchiha's child and therefore the rightful heir to the Uchiha clan? Asked Tsunade. Pretty much. Was the only reply they got but the effect was much more catastrophic as Sasuke instantly collapsed along with several of the council. During the commotion Madara was just smirking while looking at the boy. So you are the son I never knew I had it's good to see you or that good a fighter without the Sharingan as well. At which point he turned to Amaterasu. Kami I have never seen him other than to fight so I wish to make a small recompense I wish for him to have my eyes. If anyone has earned them it is him. At this the Shinigami walked forward and was about to cover their eyes when a shrill shout was heard. Hold on a second you just said I am not his mother, what do you mean by that? screamed a furious Kashina. Oh sorry I should have explained better the only person who he has no relation to is Minato. Due to you carrying him he did inherit bits of your genetics so in essence he has two mothers. Said Amaterasu while watching the transplant being completed only to see Naruto collapse holding his head. Madara what did you do? Oh nothing much I just programmed my eyes to pass on my collected knowledge to my legacy if he truly was which he is. With a smirk at the looks of terror on the faces of some of the people in the room. Okay Naruto I have to ask would you like to go to your mother's realm? Asked the goddess, I don't see why not since I just found out I can return here anytime I want with my eyes. Replied Naruto in a rather unsure voice. Excellent I've set up accommodation and such for you I have one last thing. Minato why did you attempt to kill the Kiyubi? Growled the goddess making the blonde to flinch, EHH. Oh you only meant to, filter chakra into Naruto, well sorry to say you fucked up. Naruto is absorbing it by the end of the month Kurama will be dead and well let's just say there needs to be a nine tails. She said making them all flinch. Well that is a very long term problem it's time to go Naruto grab your uniforms say goodbye. Said the goddess. Erm mom sorry and I love you and da. Madara. Fuck I don't know I just know thanks for the eyes and ill say hi to whoever this is for you. Everyone ill drop a scroll every now and then. And with that the goddess of heaven and the sun opened a portal to another realm in which Naruto the son of Madara had no idea what to expect was awaiting him. As the sun rose streams of light pierced through the curtains in the room of a small apartment. One of the small rays if the morning sun hit Naruto in the eyes causing him to wake up. When Naruto managed to drag himself out of bed and start to trudge towards the kitchen for his traditional morning ramen when in the corner of his peripheral vision he saw a stranger. Upon seeing this stranger reflex kicked in and he reached for one of his many hidden kanai and threw it at the man only to find it bury itself in the wall. Once Naruto had collected himself he turned and surveyed himself in the mirror remembering that his appearance had changed due to a godly henge being removed. Looking in the mirror Naruto saw that his hair was now a black, blue color it was also sleek, shoulder length hair while also being slightly spiked. His eyes had turned a deep violet color with a vulpine slit pupils as well as a small pair of fangs. After looking about he found a small letter on his bedside table along with a scroll the size of his summoning scroll. Hello Naruto, I am sorry I had to leave so quickly but this letter should explain a couple of items I did not have time to the other day. 1. The first is that the henge is now completely removed what you see in the mirror is what you truly look like. 2. 
Unfortunately your friend Karama is no longer with us he always saw you as a brother, son so he managed to filter his chakra into you rather than dying. Ironically this not only makes you the sage of the six paths but also the Kiyubi no Kitsune. I have spoken to the other Biju and they will look out for you as the link is still active. 3. I have prepared a scroll with necessary items for the trip this includes scrolls to weapons to camping gear, they have been modified to make them effective against all enemies in this realm. 4. Once you have practiced feel free to return to the nations just be aware there is a slight time difference between the locations, I just feel it would be cruel to lock out the savior of our realm from his friends. 5. Due to the massive information dump from both Karama and Madara, Dot and myself, I included local information including mythology. This might have a slight impact on your personality, might not but it is a possibility. Anyway as of right now your mother doesn't know you're here but I am notifying her of your presence shortly I just had some issues to deal with due to the aftermath of the war. I hope you have a good time, from your aunt, Amaturasa. Naruto read the note a couple of times and turned to the scroll unraveling to look at the contents only to see that it was literally what was stated on the tin. An ungodly amount of shuriken and kanai, even Hiraishin kanai but what surprised him was the inclusion of kabikirabocho as well as several custom swords ranging from Tonto to Chikudo. Apart from the mobile arsenal also included was several of his new uniforms as well as what was labeled as, civilian clothes, as well as a section labeled, training, and, personal, reading. The only thought that went through his head as he looked at this was, thank god for clones. XXXXX a couple of months later Richmond, Virginia. XXXXX Naruto had been traveling around the country placing tags for the Hiraishin. He had worked on it and several other Fuinjutsu at the end of the war thinking that they would come in useful in a situation such as this. Now here he was scouting the land and placing the markers in key locations. It was during one of these excursions that he came across odd occurrence. While in a small wooded area of Richmond he felt several small energy levels nearby that piqued his interest as from what he could tell no one in the world he currently resided had any more chakra than what was required to live, well except these supposed gods. So to find some people who registered above normal was unusual. When he detected them he activated his seals bringing out his black anbu armor and fox mask and shun shin to their location. While standing on the roof above the three that are giving off the signatures watching them interact Naruto noticed several things, the first would be that like shinobi each seems to have a unique, taste, to their power suggesting that they each have their own affinity. Also noticing how young the blonde is Naruto couldn't help but feel sorry for them as they're just scared kids. You're part of our family now. We will look after each other from now on. The blonde boy says to the young girl who seconds ago had introduced herself as Annabeth. Deal screamed the young annabeth with a look of unbridled joy now tell me what are three kids doing out at this time of night naruto asked after silently dropping down behind them the sudden appearance of a masked man had all three of them on edge with their weapons drawn only to be taken aback when he started laughing there is no need for the pointy sticks with me as apparently i am in a similar boat as you something about unusual parentage stated naruto only to receive dumbfounded looks causing him to sigh Okay how about I introduce myself then? Said Naruto calmly slowly removing his mask and attaching it to his hip. My name is Naruto I was traveling the country when I came across you three and you looked like you needed help so I think I will travel with you as a sort of, guardian, till you get to a safe location that is if you wish so? This statement seemed to snap the older two out of their trance as they went into a small discussion together about whether or not to let him join them. He said he was a half-blood, said the older girl. No he said, similar situation, that could mean anything but I do admit something does feel, different about him. Said the boy looking over at Naruto who was doing his best to look innocent. Well either way he certainly looks like he can handle himself especially with how he got behind us, responded the girl. True and considering he is an adult there will be less questions about why we are traveling we can pass off as a family and friend trip. The boy said with a humorous smirk on his face to the girl which went right over her head. Well are you wanting my help? interrupted Naruto. Ehh sure but we need to get you a weapon to fight the monsters as. Don't bother I have an armory in this scroll all made specifically to fight those pests, replied the enigma with a smirk at the questioning looks. Well shall we be off? was all Naruto said as he started walking. XXXXXA month later Warden State Forest XXXXX.
In the previous month the small group had bonded more than expected it was no longer that of traveling companions and more a small family. The fact that each of them had similar pains helped them bond. The kids seemed to look at Naruto as a wise, or at least knowledgeable older brother and it really amused him as he was always being called an idiot back home. Luke was slightly brooding but nowhere near as much as he was when Naruto arrived and it was because a simple conversation. Flashback Hey Luke why'd I always feel like your emotions could put the sun out? Naruto asked the 14 year old one night only to receive a questioning look. Oh yeah I didn't explain that I am an empath did I? Hee hee hee. No you did not but to explain all three of us were abandoned by one of our parents, I then had to watch my mother slowly sink into madness. So yeah dark emotions would sum it up about right, replied the blonde. Well remember I told you that I was summoned here from another dimension? said Naruto getting a nod from the blonde as he remembered a rather shocking conversation they had had the week before. Yeah well in my dimension I had two sets of parents my surrogate parents who died within two hours of my birth, explained Naruto getting a flinch from the boy. Then there is my father who I really have no idea what to think cause he died years before I was born but managed to resurrect himself and fight the combined armies of my world single-handedly to the point of whining till me and a friend killed him, sighed Naruto. So basically I am related to one of the greatest warriors of my world but also one of the greatest criminals. As for my mother, after my father I just don't care, I have decided they can all get to fuck as long as I can take care of what is precious to me, said Naruto to the boy. And I thought my family was bad, muttered Luke, I know. The point is that Hermes is not who defines you, you are. You are Luke Castellan brother of the two girls behind us and their guardian through thick and thin, the one who will look out for them when I cannot. Naruto proclaimed with a look of determination. Flashback end little Annabeth was a sponge for knowledge and was incredibly quick on the take up on most things. Also it was incredibly cute the way she followed her big brother Luke around like a little puppy. She was overjoyed when Naruto gave her the journal of one Madara Uchiha to read with the explanation of who it was and that he would like her to give him the idiot's version when she was done. This caused her to laugh but she understood his reasons. Plus it was a book she had never seen before of course she would jump at the chance. Talia though she was cold at first, distrustful that was until she followed Naruto into the woods and saw him training, all she saw was him swinging a sword bigger than her as if it weighed the same as a sheet of paper from then on she had been practically begging for him to train her only for him to ask why she fought or to ruffle her hair with a small smile. As Naruto sat there in a tree branch he couldn't help but smile at the memories of how close they had all become. He was currently above the two small tents in the clearing in his full black anbu gear and due to the dead of night he had activated his sharingan to make sure that nothing got past. With a small sigh he expanded his senses out a small ways and was shocked to feel a small party of people. With this he dropped down and started to wake up the kids before darting off to asses the group. Upon arriving at the small party he realized that they were experienced especially if they had managed to keep mostly hidden with the silver jackets they were wearing. There was also the fact that they were covering all their sides except one which spoke a lot of their experience. Dot but then again no one expects an attack from straight up. Naruto ghosted along above these, hunters, as they slowly made their way through the forest, only to notice one start to fall behind. Enter mischievous grin here. XXXXX campsite XXXXX It wasn't long ago that Naruto had woken the group up and warned them about an unknown group approaching. So they followed the procedure they had set up. Naruto would go and make sure it was safe or run a diversion while the three youngsters pack up the camp as fast as possible and start heading to one of the areas marked beforehand as a meeting point. It was just after the camp was packed away when six young girls in silver jackets burst out of the foliage with bows drawn. Hum what do we have here, half-bloods? We shall take them before our mistress, proclaimed one of the girls, she was pretty with long black hair and matching eyes. Erm okay but who would this mistress be? asked Luke only to receive a slap. Silence boy. Be lucky we didn't riddle thou with arrows just for laying eyes on the hunt but to answer thy question thy shall see shortly, bind him. On her order Luke was knocked unconscious and bound while the girls were lead into the forest their bags being carried by one of the hunters. They couldn't help but wonder what had happened to Naruto. XXXXX main tent hunters camp XXXXX Talia and Annabeth were both led into a rather impressive looking tent by the black haired girl and another hunter. 
Once inside they saw a small girl with shimmering silver eyes and bright auburn hair petting a wolf just sitting on a mound of furs without a care in the world. Milady I have brought them, said the black-haired girl. Thank you Zoe as efficient as ever, replied the young girl, there were four of them wasn't there? No milady only three, said the now named Zoe, I want you to find the other it wouldn't do to have a rogue demigod tarnish my name and you are my best tracker, Phoebe can help keep an eye here. I shall head out as soon as we are done milady. Good, sighed the girl, now I have a proposition for you too how would you like to become one of my hunters? This caused Talia to smirk, okay two questions who are you and if you are who you claim to be by that question what is the hitch? This caused two reactions one was a confused look from Annabeth the other was pure anger from Zoe. How dare thy speek to my mistress like such, she raged. Zoe calm yourself she meant no disrespect she is just being careful which I can understand fully. Said the girl before addressing Talia, well as you guessed yes I am the goddess Artemis and the, hitch, as you call it is that you forego the company of men. So it is like the legend says eternal maidens who give up love for eternal life in the hunt? One hell of a trade off if you ask me especially if you can't even see your family outside the hunt, nope ill pass said Talia with determination while getting a nod from Annabeth as well. Unfortunate but I accept your reasons once we find your companion we will allow you on your way, said Artemis. Foolish, muttered Zoe, what was that, growled Talia. Thy is being foolish all men are but beasts that know nothing but how to betray for power and greed, proclaimed the huntress. HNN that is what you think of me well I guess I should just lop your mistress's head off instead of just walking my companions out then him asked a new voice. A male voice but what surprised everyone was that it was coming from behind Artemis. How? What? When? A series of questions barraged the man in the mask standing over the auburn-haired girl with a chikudo at her throat. Well to answer in said order, he looked directly at the god. I am a shinobi of the elemental nations. The implications of this statement were horrible for her that alone meant that he could be as strong as a minor god. She really hoped he wasn't one of the exceptions who were. More so. Then it hit her she had seen that uniform before. Anbu? She whispered, Very good, my little goddess, you know my rank now, your subordinate has insulted me greatly, why should I not? Correct that. Said the figure, leaving all but Artemis in the dark about his possible abilities. She is ignorant, and her reasons for believing such are well deserved are also misplaced. Said the goddess, knowing that one slight mistake in her head would roll. Good reason, said the masked man while sheathing his blade before turning to Talia. Return to Luke, I have issues to discuss with Artemis, in a tone that offered no room for discussion. Once receiving a nod from her, he turned back only to receive a glare from the Zoe girl. Zoe, calm yourself. If I wished your mistress dead, she would already be so before you knew, said the man in a serious tone that caused her to flinch. It is most likely true Anbu are trained in unparalleled stealth he could have had my head easily which only prompts why not, she asked. As a goddess in tune with nature and who tended to avoid contact with the world she was occasionally allowed entrance to that world it was why she knew of their skills. She knew not many did other than reports of what was going on as it was the border between the Greeks and the Shinto a neutral zone if you will. Well when I have to return someone to you. Only getting looks of confusion at this Naruto could tell no one had noticed the girl's disappearance so he activated his M's and brought her out of his Kamui. Phoebe, screamed Zoe, what did you do to her? Nothing the paper on her head has her in a state of unconsciousness I had her stored somewhere safe, explained Naruto with a hidden smirk, I actually find it funny that neither of you noticed that she was missing from this room for the last five minutes, leaving them both looking like goldfish. Anyway the second reason I am here is to give you my dear goddess an offer which I advise you to take as it can only help your little group's effectiveness in combat but that will be up to you. And what might that be? Asked the goddess who was still trying to recover from the several shocks that this man had laid out before her. Well, Exxon, Camp Half-Blood, one month later, XXXXX. Chiron was sitting on the deck of the big house late at night just looking out considering how beautiful a night it was he was even able to enjoy it to the fullest as Mr. D had been summoned to Olympus for some kind of late night council. So he had his Frank Sinatra playing softly in the background while reading a book. 
For some unknown reason his thoughts drifted to a young satyr called Grover it was his first time out in the field when he checked and he had some surprising news he had come across what looked like a group of demigods making their way to camp. But that wasn't the surprising part it's that they were already claimed. One was a son of Hermes and according to Grover an incredibly powerful one as well as a good swordsman. There was also a daughter of Athena she was also very smart especially for her age. And lastly and most shockingly for Chiron a daughter of Zeus. Just as the Iris message that Grover was using was finishing he said something about an anomaly but it must be nothing to worry about cause they were only a day out when he called with no major problems. All of a sudden a roar so loud that it threatened to tear up chunks of the earth came from the other side of the barrier causing Chiron to immediately grab his bow and charge up the hill to see what was causing the commotion. When he reached the top all he saw was four children running for their lives from a massive swarm. One of the group he immediately is the satyr Grover as he was practically manhandling a small blonde girl up the hill who seemed to be trying to get back to the other two who were fighting a rear guard action, he had to admit it was a wise choice if only to buy time. As he watched he saw the other two start their fall back only for the black haired girl to get wounded severely. That was the tipping point of the exchange the horde having gotten what they wanted started to move back but still lingered to make sure she was dead. The girl with a massive amount of willpower screamed for the boy just to go and the boy cursing how stubborn she could be did as she wished. It was then that she was struck by lightning and turned into a tree. Thus creating a massive tragedy in amidst what could have been a happy event. No Chiron was not looking forward to explaining this to the children. No he was not xxxxx olympus a few minutes before xxxxx zeus was pissed beyond all rights he had been found out as having another affair with his ever loyal wife which meant that he was expecting either a punishment for him to be handed down or as per tradition the option to pass it on to the offending child zeus you made a oath to me which you have broken proclaimed Styx, the goddess of oaths you know what happens when this occurs now make your choice at this Zeus only nodded knowing that she knew what his choice was and that the fates were watching and would enact it if he did not. Very well I hope you are more hey honorable about your oaths in future. She said before disappearing from the council causing them to breath easier. There were few entities in the world that could make the Olympians shudder with fear but Styx was one of them as she always got her dues. Well with that piece of nasty business out of the way, said Zeus. Nasty for you brother said Poseidon earning him a glare from the god of the sky but before anything could erupt between them there was another flash drew everyone's attention to the center of the room. Hey me familia, proclaimed Hermes only to get a glare from Zeus. Do you mind explaining why you're late? Well I got a summoning for a express delivery to the Olympian council, from Sumatra, said the god nervously. What? screamed most of the room. Chill people, said Apollo. I am sure she is just letting us know what has been happening, there it was in some turmoil recently, this reasoning got some nods from the various gods. Very well since we are here what does it say? With that Hermes snapped his fingers and a box appeared with a letter on top. Taking the letter and opening it Hermes began reading. Hello Olympus, as usual I give you my greetings from Takamagahara I would like to say that the elemental nations are now in a state of peace and the prophecy has been fulfilled they even have a new sage and a new sage of six paths. So yeah peaceful, oh there are reports trailer to each of your domains in the box just close and open and your file will appear. Lastly one of the twelve of you should know that your child is already in your realm and probably making his way to camp. This letter is going to ignite, dot now. And with that the letter promptly burst into black flames leaving the entire council in shock, dot not at a certain god's eccentricities no they were used to that but what the letter contained. One of them had a child from outside the realm. Unfortunately for the gods or fortunately depending who it is they didn't have much time to think about it as Hephaestus got a call on one of his machines. Father there is a horde chasing a group of demigods near the camp, said the machine god. Very well can you bring it up replied Zeus knowing full well who it was going to show. As the screen formed in front of the council all Zeus saw was Talia get impaled by a claw yards from safety. Then without thinking what he was doing he was just wanting to save her. Zeus used her essence to build a barrier so that this kind of event will never happen again. It was at this point that Apollo's eyes glowed with a golden hue which signify a change to a prophecy. The grand prophecy has been delayed but only slightly though there is also a disturbing presence. 
said Apollo. What do you mean? demanded Zeus. Well it's like instead of there being. A. Future the path is a haze with it covering several paths I don't know why it just is. Said the god of prophecy rather confused. XXXXX. Naruto. Half Blood Hill. XXXXX. Naruto was standing observing the horde with his Sharingan active had arrived just as Talia a girl he considered family was stabbed only to be hit by lightning by her own father so to say he was not happy was an understatement. What only made him more angry was he saw the supposed trainer of heroes just standing around while the kids were struggling their way towards the barrier. Knowing he was in no state to go anywhere near the camp in the emotional state he was in Naruto decided he would return later and just send the kids later for now. But as of now he had some monsters to deal with. With that Naruto couldn't help but chuckle at the irony of what he was planning to do. XXXXX. Olympus. XXXXX. Zeus was still sulking he had just condemned his daughter to chaos knows what hell for however long and while he knew he deserved it as his punishment from the sticks, she didn't he was a coward and he knew it. Erm dad are you doing anything with the lightning right now? Asked Apollo. No, why? Because there is a thunderstorm forming above that horde and it doesn't look too friendly, was Apollo's reply at this the gods all focused on the screen again. Well this looks interesting, mumbled Ares who had been bored and practically asleep the whole council. How so? asked Poseidon. Well if it is not father doing that who is? Ares asked causing the whole council to look at the lightning that was now forming a shape in a new light. XXXXX. Naruto. XXXXX. Naruto was rather amused at the moment the technique he was using had cost barley a tenth of the chakra it should have due to the thunderstorm that was passing over. The technique itself was rather impressive as well as Devi stating if used right. Okay enough showing off I definitely have their attention now for the finale. Kirin, said Naruto slowly lowering his hands towards the target and in time with the motion a large eastern style dragon made of lightning descended from the heavens and crashed into the horde completely disintegrating them where they stood. Looking at his handiwork Naruto gave a satisfied nod before using the shunshun he had a few places to go before he went home to train but one thing was for sure he would be back especially after that showing. XXXXX. Olympus. XXXXX. Well someone knows how to clear out the pests. Said Hephaestus only to get glared at by Zeus. WHO the fuck used my lightning. Bellowed Zeus. Calm down brother I am sure it is just that. Elemental nations. Kid in which case it's not. Your lightning. But his own life force they are using. Come on brother you should know this as it is required knowledge for you since you need to meet the Shinto there. Said Poseidon. This only caused Zeus to grumble. This only begs the question whose child is it? Asked Demeter this caused everyone to look about in wonder although some just looked pointedly between Zeus, Poseidon, Apollo and Aphrodite. Well if you must know he is mine. Said Hera before standing up and walking from the room leaving the council in a state of shock. Everyone put your back and power into it. Bellowed a very pissed off god of justice while at the head of a large battering ram as he and the other Olympians prepared to batter down Hera's temple door. What had lead the king of the gods to such a rash action? Jealousy. He knew it plain and simple. His wife had cheated on him and he was livid about the fact. To make matters worse she had not even shown the slightest interest in explaining herself to anyone. She had just secluded herself in her marble temple and locked the doors with some kind of spell that no one could break. Okay on my count three, two, xxxxx. Inside Hera's temple. XXXXX. Hera was sitting on her usual chair, nothing fancy despite how ostentatious the temple looked her tastes were rather simple it was just a small, comfortable recliner that she used to relax in her free time. While she was relaxing she was sincerely glad that she had listened to her friend's recommendation and learned some of the ceiling arts when she was mortal as they proved incredibly effective at securing spaces. Boom. That was all she heard not long after she had settled into a comfortable position. Well I have attempting to break my door down is a better reaction than I expected, sighed the queen before pulling up the recording of the evening's events. The camera's angle was bad for looking at anything but the immediate area around the foot of the newly dubbed, Half-Blood Hill, but Hera had a feeling that if her son was going to use a large AOE AN, 
one jutsu such as he did, if her suspicions were correct, he would be far enough away to be safe but close enough to observe and alter the plan if needed. With this in mind she scanned the background of the image for any sign of something out of the ordinary. After a few minutes of searching she saw it a sill out in the distance shrouded in what appeared to be a black trench coat. Seeing this Hera could only smile. Hum I suppose I have some time to prepare my cabin for my Sochi's arrival, she said as she saw the figure disappear into the darkness. Well I guess I will be visiting an old friend soon, but for now it's time to talk to my loving family as she approached the door with a small smirk on her face. XXXXX. Unknown desert. XXXXX. The sun had just risen over the horizon of the desert when Vortex appeared and a tall man in a black coat stepped out of it. As the stranger surveyed his surroundings his appearance shifted drastically from dark black hair to a sunlight blonde in color. I do have to admit it feels good to be home, well not home exactly but close enough, thought Naruto. What do you mean by that? asked Talia in a slightly confused tone. Well remember I said I was another country, replied Naruto internally as he started walking towards a small group of fastly approaching signatures. Yeah, said Talia hesitantly. Well I didn't lie I just didn't mention where that country was, which is in a different dimension you should be happy you are doing something that no one other than the gods of your world can do. He said with a smirk. Halt, who are you and what is your business? came a shout from what sounded like all round them. My name is Naruto, I am here to see my friend the case cage Gara, shouted Naruto back to the sentry while ignoring Talia screaming at him to defend himself in his head. Naruto, as in Naruto Uzumate, this question caused a slight twitch of the eyebrow but got a nod of the head from Naruto. Okay we will escort you to the village just as a precaution we will bind your wrists, I am sure you understand said the lead sentry before sending a messenger AHAID of the group. XXXXX. Sunagakar. XXXXX. Naruto was sitting in a small room in the main tower of Suna waiting for Gara to come and see him. So he decided to go into his mindscape and visit his new, guest. Flashback. Naruto had just arrived back at the scene of the incident. After his little tantrum he had decided to go and pick up some necessary supplies and write a message for the other two kids to be delivered by a small vixen shortly. When Naruto arrived back at the hill he activated his Sharingan and surveyed the scene for any type of surveillance. Finding no one watching he jumped up to the tree that was sending shivers down his spine but he needed to know. Climbing the tree Naruto then started to slowly and discreetly enter sage mode. He then directed his senses towards the newly sprung tree and found two distinct energy sources both tied together yet distinctly apart. Reasoning that the tree was using Talia as a sort of catalyst for the barrier his eyes saw he couldn't risk removing her without the possibility of damaging her but there could be another way. Dropping to the ground Naruto found the girl still slightly exposed from the tree there he placed his hand on her head and directed his energy into her and forged a temporary bond similar to the ones he had with Sasuke during their fights. With that done he dove into his mindscape. XXXXX. Mindscape. XXXXX. Naruto opened his eyes to see that his mindscape had changed to a rather fitting but surprising scene, the valley of the end, and on top of Hashirama's head was one twelve-year-old black-haired girl out cold. When Naruto reached her he couldn't help but smile at how cute the little spitfire was when she was asleep. Hey Talia wake up, wake up Talia, wake up. He shouted getting closer and closer to her ear as he did so causing her to almost fall off the statue. What the fuck did you do that for? Her only reply was a smirk from the irritating man. Naruto was just sitting there. Wait for it, wait for it. Fuck I was stabbed. She screamed. Yes you were. Naruto replied. Then how am I here? And where is here anyway cause all I remember for a good while is darkness and the cold. She said shivering at the memory. Well to answer your questions in order your asshole of a dad turned you into a tree to save you, probably hoping that some kid from that camp can free you in the future, said Naruto. Oi don't say things like that about my dad, she yelled. Well let me explain of all the possible places he could have hit on that hill he chose you, if he had hit the monsters I would have had time to come and heal you, if the campers had gotten off their asses you probably wouldn't have been injured said Naruto but seeing she was about to argue back he forged on. And before you say it was too dangerous for them to leave the barrier let me remind you they are trained you are not. Well officially at least. 
The Leah considered what Naruto had said. It really was a move but why would he hit her if there was medical help close by? Even if he didn't know about Naruto the camp probably could have used Ambrosia which can help heal people from most near fatal injuries, even fatal ones sometimes. It did not make sense but she did trust her dad. Okay well you still have to explain where we are, she said looking around the spectacular scenery. Well I almost died here, twice, was Naruto's reply getting him a wide-eyed stare. Seriously, seriously but this is just a projection of the place we aren't actually there. Okay I am really confused now, Naruto sighed and sat down. Okay basically I used a technique to create a sort of bridge between our consciousnesses of a few moments ago your conscious mind is residing inside my mindscape which is a sort of mental projection of your personality. Naruto half explained just getting a nod from the girl. Okay so basically I am doing this to see if you are okay and because it doesn't look like I can get you out any time soon but at least you know I can visit from time to time Imoto, said Naruto with a small smile. What you mean I am stuck? Well yes, er maybe, m yes, was Naruto's shifty reply. Talia's eyes narrowed dangerously, Naruto what are you hiding? Fuck. Okay I didn't want to say anything but I have been toying with the idea of adapting some of the knowledge I gained from an old friend and try and recreate a technique I saw used, said Naruto. Okay now explain why you're nervous, said Talia slowly. Well two reasons I didn't want to get your hopes up, and I might not be able to do it right. Naruto said quietly. Well it's my choice so explain thoroughly. Well it is similar to this except I will need to essentially forge a semi-permanent link to you if this fails you're stuck in a tree if I succeed but the link fails after a time you might with no warning get yanked back into the blackness of that tree with no warning and I have no idea what that could do to your mind, and lastly the effect of you being merged with me in a sort of symbiosis might have side effects, but I am not sure what. Said Naruto feeling more and more disgusted with himself the more he spoke about it. So that is the cons the pros are that I will have someone to talk to, won't go mad from isolation, still get to learn and train with you, anything else. Talia asked with sincere curiosity. Well since you will essentially be, in my head, you will have access to my senses so you will see and hear what is going on around me, just be aware if I go home. Dot you might get some. Strange visitors. Finished Naruto with a sweat drop while remembering Killer B he really did feel sorry for Gyuki. Hum I think I will. End flashback. When he opened his eyes after entering his mindscape he was always shocked that she had chosen the risky road. But then again she was just a little bit of a spitfire. Hey Naruto. Talia shouted from the shore below him. Hey. He replied as he dropped down, enjoying yourself. Getting used to the accommodations. Yeah, I have to say I was not expecting to find that room under a statue like that but hey who cares. Anyway why are we here? She asked. Well you see the goddess that brought me to your world is interesting. She did the equivalent of throwing a grenade in a china shop when taking me there so I am visiting my friend to find out if things have calmed down, said Naruto. What do you mean by that? Asked the confused girl. I'm sure you will find out soon as I can sense him approaching. And with that Naruto faded from the scape. XXXXX. Meeting room. XXXXX. As Naruto's eyes opened he saw Gara looking at him closing the door. Behind him were his two closest advisors and siblings. The trio cautiously approached and sat down with Konkuro on Gara's left and Tamari on the right. The entire time Gara was stoically evaluating the person sitting in the chair. Who are you? He asked getting a confused look from his siblings. Whatever do you mean Gara? I am Naruto can I not say hi to a friend? Naruto responded with a slight smirk. I know that you are not Naruto Uzumaki as he left this dimension one month ago so I repeat who are you. At this Naruto's eyebrow couldn't help but rise, well I knew there was a time dilation but one month to a year. Naruto thought, what do you mean and why doesn't he think you are you? These people know me looking different than I do now so I am disguised as I used to look but apparently that plan failed. Naruto internally griped. Okay I will level with you old friend, said Naruto dropping his henge, you knew I was in a henge the reason is as you can see I look like a fucking Uchiha. Naruto moaned as he saw Tamari and Konkuro ready their selves. Well that's cause you are an Uchiha. Naruto I read the report and I know about your, issue. 
You really like attracting the strange to yourself don't you? replied the cage with one of his rare smiles as he stood and signaled for them to follow. Excuse me Gara what do you mean by Naruto as a Uchiha? Wasn't he of the Uzumaki clan? asked Tamari. Yes he still is although not as strongly as first believed but still has the right to claim heir, he is also the technical clan head of the Uchiha. Due to a rather surprising discovery, he said in his usual monotone. Anyway Gara, I guess you know why I came here then. Said Naruto. Yes you wish to know whether or not the ruckus in Konoha has subsided, it has will you cause another undoubtedly since you can't help the fact of being yourself. Said Gara, causing all that heard him to chuckle. Thanks I think it would be good to rest for a few days before heading there, he said, that would be wise as Tamari was also about to head back as our liaison to the leaf you might as well go at the same time, and with a nod to his friend vanished into an office leaving Naruto with two irate shinobi. XXXXX, Konoha, XXXXX. As Naruto and Tamari approached the gate they encountered the comforting sight of the two eternal chunin standing guard waving them in. They must have assumed that Naruto was Tamari's guard for the trip giving his completely black nondescript outfit no one would be able to tell who he was aligned with. Once through the gate he saw Tamari starting to head off towards the clan houses which caused Naruto to smirk slightly. Hey Tamari try not go to roughly on poor Shika it might get troublesome for him. He yelled after her and started laughing at the small blush that appeared on her cheeks. And with that he headed off toward heaven on earth. Hello Ayame I haven't seen you in a while one ramen please. The girl behind Ichirakus nodded with a slight frown as she had never seen the boy before yet for some reason he felt very familiar. Here you go but if you don't mind who are you? She asked politely. Oh come on Ayame it is me Naruto is it my clothes? This provoked even more confusion along with a sweat drop but she decided to ignore it go back to work. Just as Naruto finished his bowl he felt a group appear behind him. Okay slowly turn round with your hands where we can see them, said a rather familiar voice. Christ can I go anywhere and get a warm welcome? Naruto complained getting a small chuckle from a certain spectator. When he turned round Naruto almost fell to the ground laughing as standing in front of him was none other than Sakura, Sasuke and Kakashi along with a few other junin. Well I knew by returning I'd get a warm welcome but to think that the party would be thrown by my old team. I swear I am touched. Right here, said Naruto pointing at his heart while smirking. He watched as the shock and confusion rippled outwards until. No, it was barely a whisper, sorry Tem you stuttered please open your mouth and speak clearly. No that did not happen you are not Uchiha you are not related to me. He practically bellowed his rage at the thought breaking his usual calm demeanor. Oh you're half right but that is not the point what are you doing here your power was supposed to be sealed, said Naruto. The hag was overruled for the good of the village, said Sasuke with venom remembering his supposed punishment. Hum okay well I am here to see Ba Chan anyways see ya. And with that disappeared leaving a stunned audience behind which did what civilians do best, gossip. XXXXXX. Senju Manor. XXXXXX. Naruto was on his way to Tsunade's signature when, I have to say your, friends, here are gits, well Gara and Tamari were nice but said the fly on the wall. True they are now but there was a time when they were all I had so. Yeah, he said. So where are we going? Talia asked curiously. To the house of the woman I considered a mother, thought happily as he remembered the many fond times he had had with Tsunade. Then why do you call her granny? Hold on how did I know what you said meant? Said a very confused girl. I wouldn't worry about it Imoto, he said with a smirk knowing that she would further out the meaning soon. Naruto landed at the door to the Senju house and knock only to hear the irritated groaning of a certain godmother coming closer to the door. Once the door opened standing there looking exactly as she usually does slightly tipsy was his godmother Tsunade. Hey Ba Chan, I am back for a little bit. Thought you would want some company. He said with a small grin only to be knocked over by a bear hug. Gaki I am glad you're back I am sorry you had to go through that come and tell me how your trip's been. The Hokage Monument was famous across the entirety of the elemental nations as it was one of the things that set the village of Konoha apart from the other villages. The faces of the leaders of the village had been immortalized into the cliff face as a memorial to the strongest shinobi in the village, 
Sitting atop one of these memorials was, the second sage of six paths he was sitting there as still as a rock, he had literally became a part of nature itself. XXXXX. Hokage Monument. XXXXX. Hey, are you awake? Asked a certain blue-eyed girl from within Naruto's mindscape. MMHHMM. Cool so what are you doing? Asked Talia wondering why he had been sitting here for so long. Well I am just thinking about how fucked up my family is Naruto replied. Well no shit we are related to gods. How much more fucked up can you get? Dead panned the girl. Well I never did explain my family to you did I? Asked stated Naruto before slipping slowly into his mindscape. Mindscape. As Naruto phased into the mindscape he was assaulted by a short mass with a small tuft of black hair tickling his nose. Well to Leah not that I don't like getting a hug from my little sister might I ask what provoked it? Asked Naruto. It had been three months since their arrival in the nations and Naruto and Talia had grown very close. It is hard not to when you share a head, whereas before they had been friends or associates helping each other survive they had formed a pseudo family bond that they found comforting. Well I can tell that we are going back soon so I just wanted to make sure you were feeling okay said the girl with a smile and a hint of sadness. That's fine anyway I am going to explain who the statues are said Naruto pointing to his mindscape's version of the Valley of the End. Oh I will admit I was very curious and tempted to ask Matabi-chan but I didn't want to pry, said Talia looking slightly guilty at the admission. It is okay well the statue on the other side of the valley the one with the straight hair. His name is Hashirama Senju he is Tsunade's grandfather, I am technically related to him due to my father implanting his genetic code into himself there for me getting bit of him, I also have an arm grown from his cells said naruto to a stun talia she had heard of hashirama from the memories naruto had allowed her to watch and knew he was insanely strong the other one is dot ga fuck it he is called madara uchiha he is one of the enemies i was forced to fight and in the end help destroy in the war now the problem here is that he is my biological father ground out a rather irate naruto well fuck i know after this some time passed between the two just sitting there thinking that doesn't help to explain why Tsunade did what she did, said the raven-haired girl. Well, flashback, Naruto had been at his godmother's house for almost a month and while he was there he had been setting his affairs straight. He was officially made, Kitsune, in the Anbu ranks and was also awarded other flashy titles not that he cared. He had also ignored every summons to the council as the Uchiha Uzumaki Namikaze clan head simply because he didn't care. Naruto are you here? came a pleasantly familiar voice. Of course Shizune I've only been ignoring those I want to ignore, said Naruto, besides I always have time for you, he finished with a cheeky smile. Well I think Tsunade-sama has a surprise for you, she said with a smirk causing Naruto to both give a questioning and slightly apprehensive look towards her. Well Naruto I think you might want to read this, said Tsunade throwing a scroll to him. When he finished reading all he could think was. Why? Well Naruto up until she came you were happy with who you were and happy with me looking out for you but now you seem confused and from WHT I can tell you don't seem to look like you feel worthy of using Kashina's name, which trust me she wouldn't care, said the older woman. So I decided to finish those papers off and officially give you a family. End flashback. Well to Leah she did that because my surrogate mother was. Very loving and before Amaterasu came we had quite the connection due to our personalities being similar. Unfortunately I only met her twice. Said Naruto sadly at this Talia just remained quiet. You see my mo. Kashina was the last of her clan and this made me the de facto heir to her clan but now that I know that I am just a surrogate child it just doesn't feel right somehow. I just need time to come to terms with my gorgeous knot of a family tree before I can allow myself to call myself by those names said Naruto getting a nod and a hug from the girl who could see the hurt in his eyes. I know it hurts but I am sure everything will be fine with time, said Talia. I am sure you're right but for now we should go visit the rest of our family, I already said to Tsunade that I shall be gone for a while so she gave me a sage license, and one and the last letter that Mew delivered from Anna said that they are settling in so let's go shake things up like we always do shall we, said Naruto with a shit-eating grin provoking Talia to laugh. Outside Mindscape, 
As Naruto stood there on top of the monument with the scroll containing his belongings he couldn't help but feel that he wouldn't be back for a while not that it would affect him much. He had found out in his chats with the Baiju that he was the new Kyuubi the powers were just in the process of manifesting so he couldn't help but wonder how things would turn out when they did. After a quick mental goodbye Naruto activated his eyes and disappeared from Konoha without a trace. XXXXX Olympus Similar time XXXXX Hera was rather annoyed right now her son was nowhere to be seen or heard from so she had gotten in touch with the two best trackers on Olympus, Artemis and Athena, only to find out that Artemis has already had contact with him of the near-fatal kind although she felt that she was holding something back, meanwhile apparently according to Athena her daughter received letters from him via, Courier Fox. The last straw was when she got a letter from that overgrown child of a friend of hers saying that her son was back home. This just confused her, how did he manage it interdimensional travel was a godly power, did he have help? With this information Hera departed from Olympus towards the nation's intent on learning about her son she wanted to be able to connect with him or at least talk to him. Unfortunately for the goddess they passed each other en route. XXXXX Camp Half-Blood XXXXX Though thy must beware wisdom not headed, death be guaranteed. With this the smoke cleared away and Luke stood there shaking in confusion. Well that was interesting Luke, said a familiar voice from behind him. The vortex of the Kamui closed in a rather confusing location. As he looked about to try and take in his surroundings all Naruto could see was a suffocating darkness and a monotone droning on in a failure of mystery. As he finished his survey he noticed that he wasn't alone and it just so happened to be one of the people he was looking for, it was Luke. Well that was ominous. He proclaimed startling the poor boy who thought the room was empty. W-H, 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 stuttered Luke. Luke I suggest you breath for a second before you try to talk you look like you have seen a ghost, Naruto chuckled. Well can you blame him? Asked Thalia. Not really but I am slightly worried about what the temporal difference was between the dimensions, Naruto responded worrying about a possibly violent reception. Well it looks like he is getting a coherent thought together proclaimed Thalia with a giggle as she watched her Pseudo brother fumble over his words. Okay how did you get here? Where have you been? And finally what took you so fucking long do you know what happened to Thalia? Screamed the boy only to receive one of those irritating, I know something you don't smiles that he was sure were patented by him. Well in order I arrived via my eyes, Naruto replied causing the boy to sweat drop by how ridiculous it sounded. I also returned home because I had matters to attend to and I needed to cool off or I would have slapped Sparky through a building for stupidity, Naruto continued getting a frown in return. And yes she is perfectly fine after I destroyed that army using a certain lighting technique I have, also to piss Sparky off to no end, Naruto continued while whispering the last bit, although Thalia heard it and broke down in full blown laughter. I went to the tree and checked on her and used one of my abilities and created an illusion for her consciousness to reside in until such a time as she can be healed and freed, I had to do this since the fuckwit forgot or just simply didn't care either or it just goes to prove me right in only having respect for three of the major gods ironically only one of those is on the council. Naruto finished getting a nod from Luke. That doesn't explain where you have been for three years. He growled. Well actually it does I am sure that I mentioned in one of the first letters I sent the Amui to you explained about how I had traveled to another dimension and that dimension had a time difference in it. Naruto questioned. Nope both Anna and me never received a letter like that, replied Luke finally calming down enough to think straight. Okay I believe you but only because some of the crazy stuff I've seen you do before, said Luke getting a nod from Naruto. Don't think that I have forgiven you yet I just need time to think and hear the full story, so we can talk this over another time. He finished, I wasn't expecting you to accept my explanation straight off and being willing to listen just shows how well you have grown. Said Naruto, any way do you think you could tell me what is going on here? Naruto asked wondering what all the theatrix that had been going on when he had arrived were about. Ah well that is, well I sort of have been issued a quest. Luke mumbled. Well what does the poem that I just heard have to do with a quest? EHH well they are sort of guidelines to help in the success or failure of the quest hence why they are called proficious as they are rarely wrong on what happens, said Luke. Well this one said it was able to complete it which it's not, said Naruto shocking the boy, 
If what you said is true then you, quest is to collect a golden apple from the tree of Hera. This quest is not completable for several reasons one it's guarded by a dragon laden who can only be tamed by either the Hesperades or their father, explained Naruto to Luke who was fully enraptured in the story. Now their father is far from trustworthy and even if he was you would have to carry his burden which no one in this camp can for long without dying. Naruto explained, it is possible to get another of his daughters to do collect it but I doubt they would after Heracles, so basically the god who gave this quest is a fool oh don't forget that if you did succeed you would probably gain Hera's wrath for stealing her property remember that was given to her as a wedding gift from Gaia and is immensely powerful so yeah bad idea finished Naruto looking at a very wide-eyed and pale Luke. What can I do I have already accepted? pleaded Luke. Those who abandon the mission are scum, but those who abandon their friends and family are worse than scum. Naruto reeled off remembering a certain silver-haired ninja. This little mantra has gotten me through thick and thin along with one other it has helped me walk the line and do what is right, explained Naruto as he saw a look of understanding in Luke's eyes. I will explain the rest later but for now, the last line talks about how not listening to wisdom will cause deaths I have given my wisdom and I would recommend researching before deciding in whether to go or not, but my advice is not to go, but it's your mission it's your choice, and with that Naruto stood and left the boy to his devices. XXXXX. The big house. XXXXX. I wonder what's taking him so long? Asked Annabeth as she sat next to Chiron waiting for Luke to return. Don't worry child it takes as long as it takes, call, but for the meantime just sit and try to relax, replied the centaur. Hum I still think you're cheating you old goat but yes as long as it takes, mumbled the other person in the room. And you really should learn to relax, stated a new voice from the corner of the room shocking the other three having not noticed him enter. Naruto, squelled the girl who barreled into him giving him a hug. Thank the log for flak vests otherwise you might have bruised something and said naruto with a chuckle provoking a laugh out of her so how was your trip home she asked i'm not really eventful attempt trying to get me to give him a position i didn't want anyway i got adopted into a clan and got a new mother who just so happened to be someone who i have seen as one for a while oh and i have started to make headway on that grogorian knot of a family i have he replied making her laugh more well i finished that journal if you want a summary asked annabeth Later later but I think the others in the room are annoyed at us ignoring them, stated Naruto getting Annabeth to blush at embarrassment. Well hello chill, before you start Chiron you can only call me Senju-san until you earn my respect. My reasons why are my own but let's just say I have them, said Naruto sharply. Oh and why would that be? inquired Mr. D, and you only get to talk to me if it is of vital importance. You are supposed to be a god yet since before I arrived I have been affected by petty squabbles between you all like children in a playground. Pathetic, roared Naruto. You all need to learn that respect is earned not given, so do not expect me to respect any of you till you earn it. With his peace said he left the room and entered the camp and looked about and what he saw intrigued him. From what he could see there was only twelve cabins each with their own design. The designs were unique making him assume that it was one for each god on the council and the cabins represented an aspect of their domain. As he approached a hearth at the center of the camp he noticed a small girl sitting there smiling at him to which he smiled and sat down next to her. Well I must admit I wasn't expecting to see you so soon Lady Hestia, said Naruto with a small inclination of his head. Ah it is always pleasant to be recognized but you never fail, she said with a small smile causing him to frown. I'm guessing you have met a clone of mine's then, that I left behind when I went home. He asked only to get a small nod. Well fuck looks like I need to retrieve my clones ASAP so I can figure out what the fuck has been going on. Yeah but I have to admit the look on that god's face. Fucking H-A-L-A-R-I-O-U-S I don't think he has been shouted at like that before. Ha 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 ha, responded Thalia. Yeah I wonder how long it will take him to snap out of his shock. Naruto thought with a satisfying smirk. With that out of the way he created Seal Less Clone who her eye shined itself to its counterpart to do a swap so that he could get the memories from it. XXXXX. Hearth dinner time. XXXXX. Taking three years worth of memories and cramming them into your head in under a second was not a pleasant experience he still couldn't sort most of it out without a trigger but he was getting there slowly but as for now he was sitting next to the hearth as for some reason the 
visitors, table. Table 11, had a barrier up stopping him from approaching it not that he couldn't use Kamui and walk right through it he just didn't want to show everyone his techniques right now. Okay we have a couple of bit of news today, proclaimed Chiron from the head table jarring Naruto out of his thoughts. First the quest, Chiron announced waving his hand indicating Luke who stood. After considering information surrounding the goal and the prophecy I have decided for safety reasons to abandon the quest as it would not be completable and would only lead to unnecessary injuries of my fellow campers. He announced before sitting. The campers were in shock at this especially the Ares campers who started shouting names such as cowered towards him. Luke himself didn't seem to care as he seemed to have a new burst of self-confidence in him after his chat with Naruto, a new sense of purpose. He would make sure his friends were safe. Once Chiron had regained control of the camp again he looked towards the newcomer. Okay and now we have a new camper he is slightly older than most of you and seems to have been raised in a different country so I will let him introduce himself, if you will. He invited. Hello my name is Naruto Senju I am here for tonight and tomorrow. You may call me Senju as I don't know you. Where I am from doesn't matter just know that I will not be here soon. And with that Naruto sat down only to hear two stifled giggles one in his head and one from a table behind him. Just as he thought things were about to settle down there was a collective gasp coming from the tables this caused Naruto to look about only to suddenly feel a power flowing down over him. He saw people looking above his head. Naruto promptly looked up and did what any normal person would do in his situation. Oh fuck, it was early evening in the camp and an unnerving silence had fallen upon the residents. Not a soul moved the only noise was that of the early spring breeze rustling some leaves on the trees. Oh shit, groaned a certain shinobi sitting next to the main hearth while looking up into the ethereal light hovering just above him. He really didn't need any more complications but this. This was just getting ridiculous. Hey look at the bright side at least we don't need to sleep in a tree again. Said an overly cheerful voice in his head who was obviously enjoying the scene. That might be true but what I want to know is what the fuck my clones have been doing. He responded with frustration. He looked up again at the light, hovering there was two symbols. Now that fact alone was confusing but it was the symbols, he just couldn't place them. The first looked like a crescent moon and bow the other was a fire but what was confusing was that between them was a sword and shield mark. Well erm, started a very shocked centaur. All hail Senju San champion of Artemis goddess of the moon, hunt, maidens and childbirth. All hail champion of Hestia goddess of hearth, home and family, proclaimed to a slowly recovering crowd. With this an outbreak of hushed whispers broke out amongst the teens. Taking that as his cue Naruto stood up looked about and before everyone's eyes exploded into a murder of crows. XXXXX. Naruto dropped his illusion as he was standing in front of the cabins. Looking at them with curiosity, just because he was annoyed at his mother does not mean that he wasn't wondering who she was. As he was looking over the cabins in silence one of the doors slowly opened. With a raised eyebrow Naruto looked at the cabin, it looked as if it was practically shimmering in the evening. As he entered he saw row upon row of beds each with a name plaque on it, the interior itself looked like similar to a dark forest with the roof showing the night sky. The cabin had what looked like trees acting as pillars. Advancing further and he saw two things one was a door with a shield and crossed swords on it, the other was a wall with a large number of small plaques with names. Sobering isn't it, the names of those we have regretfully lost, said a light voice behind him. That depends on what the memorial is here for, personally I think that as long as we remember our precious ones and honor their memories it is a good thing, said Naruto without turning round, they also help remind us why we do what we do, he finished. Hum so it is true that, copy, is basically another you, you do think the same way, said the goddess behind him. Turning Naruto looked at Artemis before getting a sudden influx of memories. Flashback, three years ago PJO time, Artemis's camp, Zoe re-entered the main tent after escorting the, Anbu, and his group from the camp and was about to report as such when she saw the impossible. Well my lady now that your lieutenant has arrived we can talk properly said the fox-masked man. Oh and what do you wish to speak about? replied Artemis politely shocking Zoe who was currently glaring holes into the back of the shinobi's head. Well since I was brought to this, place I have done some studying on the, gods, 
started the man getting a raised eyebrow at the way he said, Gods. And from what I can tell there is only of the major gods that I respect, he said. If you don't mind me asking who and why, asked Artemis suppressing her anger at his statement, she knew that he was a man of skill, someone she could respect. She needed to learn more about him in case he causes problems and she gets sent after him. Well the first is Hades. He said getting a shocked look from them, as the lord of the dead he is literally one of the busiest gods, also everyone falls under his domain at some point, everything dies at some point. He said seriously getting a nod of understanding from the two. The second would be Hestia, for she, despite being a minor, god is actually probably more powerful than most of you. The Anbu explained, also to use your hunters as an example the term, family, does not necessarily mean blood. It simply means people who are precious to us, people with whom we feel at home. She understands this thus my respect. And the last god that has my respect is you, said the male causing Zoe to look shocked and proud at the same time. The reasons are simple, you are Hades' polar opposite. While he has death you have life, although you don't like it you are the goddess of childbirth meaning everything is in your domain, this is why you feel so strongly for children who are hurt, even more so than others. The other is your devotion to the girls. It is a good thing you do for them but there are flaws. At this despite being, happy, that he respected her, she felt annoyed that he was questioning her way of doing things, she was a goddess damn it. And what are those flaws pre tell? She asked with more than a small amount of irritation in her voice. Well that's why the boss left me behind to help explain and if you let me try help solve the small issues he noticed, oh yeah I am a clone said the Anbu obviously amused at the looks of shock on their faces. This is gonna be lots of fun, thought the clone before it started to explain its mission. Flashback end, looking at Artemis Naruto couldn't help but smile, it is good to see you again, he said at this Artemis smiled back, from what the other you said you should be able to remember what happened while you were away. Am I correct in assuming you do? She asked out of curiosity. Yes, well bits and pieces, I did just absorb three years worth of memories from several copies of myself so they are a bit jumbled at the moment, he said getting a nod from her. Well I came to see how you are settling in and to say that you are free to use that room any time you wish. So you don't need to worry about the camp rules about cabins. With that she turned and started to walk away before she turned back, oh and Naruto I know that you aren't sure if you want to meet your parent but I will just say this she is looking forward to seeing you and yes I have not told her your whereabouts. I will let you choose when to reveal yourself to her. Good night Naruto until our next encounter. With that the goddess of the hunt vanished. Sighing Naruto turned and headed for his room. Well that was something but I have to admit some of the memories I am seeing are quite amusing, Talia said. I will have a look soon for now, bed. Good night Talia. Good night Naruto, with that the door to his room closed behind him and on marched another day. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.